let's talk Oscar De La Hoya for a little bit. This was a surprising story, to say the least. You have him coming out saying that he was an addict of cocaine. He was an alcoholic. How did it get to this point, Robert? Well, I think Oscar has really been, despite the fact that he's been a ter- he was a terrific little fighter and a fabulous business person with Golden Boy Promotions, I, I'm afraid that he is a uh, tormented individual. Um, one doesn't sort of get involved in drugs and alcohol and cross-dressing unless one has some serious issues. And uh, and if one looks at De La Hoya years back, he was always so sort of fresh and so camera-ready and so smiley. And I always felt that there was something artificial about it, that it, he, was just, he was just too perfect. And when anybody is too perfect, there's always an indication that there's something amiss somewhere. And what was that? I think it was that he never had a childhood. I mean, I'm no therapist, but I think he never had a childhood. I think he was thrown into the gym at the age of seven by his father, who who was uh, did some fighting himself, had his own sort of ambitions for his son, and basically took a child um, and started teaching him how to fight. And one of the parts about learning how to fight is also learning how to get hit. Um, so you've got this seven-year-old who's being smacked around, albeit with gloves, albeit with headgear, none of which really matters. He's a little boy. Again, that little boy grew up to be a great champion, but he started, he was a little boy. And um, no one wants to have their childhood taken from them. Okay, now, I guess I'll play devil's advocate here for a minute. It seems like he, yeah, he got thrown into the ring at a young age. Now, with all the stuff that he has become and the brand he has built, there's a lot of money. There's a lot of pressure. People will argue that there's a good lifestyle. Don't you have to be uh, pretty hard-headed to manage all that? And is Oscar De La Hoya, you know, he can get his head knocked around in the ring, but outside of it, was it a bigger fight for him? Well, it certainly seems to be. Um, And again, we don't really know the half of it. I mean, he's coming out. He's going public. He's... What he's saying is sort of peppered with AA speak, which is a sort of sort of rote therapeutic homilies to to uh, address life's you know serious challenges. But I really wonder. I mean, I wonder what is not being said. A lot is being said, and a lot of tongues are wagging. But I think there's a lot that has not been said and may never be said. Um, he is now seems to be being responsible for Oscar De La Hoya, which is in itself quite an accomplishment, um, given the givens. But he has a promotional company that was supposed to be the new kind of promotional company, the one that sort of put the fighters first because De La Hoya was a fighter. Um, let's, let's see that happen. I mean, let's really take it a step further. AA is great. It's helped hundreds of millions of people, but it is very sort of self-directed. And self-directed is not how we advance the culture, and especially not how we advance the culture of boxing. And uh, I'd like to see Oscar take it a step further. Now, where did the, uh, I mean, in case you haven't seen the photos, they completely 1,000% look photoshopped. Where exactly, if he even came out and said it, where did the cross-dressing come from? Oh, he didn't explain. Um, He did say that he was high on cocaine at the time and that he was drinking alcohol at the time, and all this sort of scandal broke in 2007. Yet in the interview that he just gave on Univision, he said he'd been doing coke for two years, which would be 2009. So immediately discrepancies are starting to emerge uh, if one takes the time to sort of examine what he is saying. Uh, I don't know where it came from. I mean, maybe a perennial tough guy, uh, you know, is is sort of like there's a sort of the bigger the front, the bigger the back. And maybe the perennial tough guy is actually not the perennial tough guy on the back end. And it seems that maybe that was the case here. Could it be that because he really deteriorated and, I mean, I'm being nice when I say this, but he got embarrassed by Manny Pacquiao. Could you say that because he became a washed up fighter in the end that he chose the cocaine and alcoholic route i think that actually preceded the fight with manny pacquiao i mean losing to manny pacquiao is no is no crime i mean 
who doesn't lose to Manny Pacquiao? Floyd Mayweather Jr. may lose to Manny Pacquiao if he ever agrees to fight him. Um, losing to Manny Pacquiao is uh, is the norm. Pacquiao is is, is a superhuman. Um, and, and and not not a steroided, not a juiced up superhuman, in my opinion. Um, I think I think I think De La Hoya's problems uh, with alcohol, with booze, with whatever, uh, preceded the Pacquiao fight, and um, and it may have actually affected his fight. And he and he redeemed himself. He fought as well as he was able to fight. But I don't think anybody really thought he was going to win that fight going in. All right. So last question for you: Where does Oscar De La Hoya go from here? Well, I think where he goes from here is to the boardroom of Golden Boy Promotions. Uh, he's president of Golden Boy Promotions. He's not the CEO. The CEO is a, is a former Swiss banker named Richard Schaefer, who's no doubt a brilliant businessman, and he's really built uh, Golden Boy into really the, the preeminent um, promotional company in the country. But um, but there's. But, but but everything is not great with Golden Boy. I mean, they've got a lot of fighters. Uh, uh, Abner Morris, who we spoke about last time, a <laughs> Golden Boy fighter. They've got a lot of refs that they work with. I mean, they've got a lot of clout. And I don't think that everything is really on the up and up. And I really think that that's where Dale Hoy should put his attention. Robert Axel, editor-in-chief of Boxing.com. Thank you very much for the time. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Anytime.